It seems like we are constantly bombarded with reminders of climate change and how it's tearing apart the ecosystem from record flooding to extreme heat. Now is Earth headed towards a mini ice age? In short, the answer is no. In fact, misconceptions and outright misinformation have gotten so out of hand, NASA decided to put the rumors to rest by publicly addressing the popular fallacy. CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Baradelli joins me now to talk about some of the most common myths about climate change and the science that debunks them. I believe in science, Jeff. I like to hear that. It's what Very it's all nice. about. I believe for me. in it too, by the way. All right, so <laughs> I'm glad because you are a meteorologist. Wait a You're a scientist, <laughs> exactly. Uh, for, all right, let's talk about the grand solar minimum mm -hmm. myth. What is that? You hear a lot about that on social media. There's a lot of people who, you know, think that climate change is made up by scientists and that think that the grand solar minimum is coming. So basically, uh, the sun goes in cycles. Now, something like a grand solar minimum is not easy uh, to predict because we don't have that much uh, history on uh, on sun, um, you know, spikes in sun and decreases in sun. Uh, however, a lot of scientists agree that a grand solar minimum may be coming. And what that would mean is a decrease in the irradiance of the sun over the course of a couple to a few decades or so. If that were to happen, though, and we can look back in history, it happened around the year 1700, something called the Maunder Minimum caused a decrease in temperatures back around the year 1700. It lasted about 30 years or so. But the decrease was only about a half a degree Fahrenheit mm -hmm. because the decrease in the sun's energy was only about a quarter of a percent or so. So it's not a lot. So even if we were to see uh, another decrease in solar energy, and we might see that in the next uh, few decades or so, it would likely only decrease, and scientists have done the research on this, the Earth's temperature by a half a degree Fahrenheit. At the same time, though, carbon dioxide and fossil fuels is increasing temperatures. We've already increased by two degrees Fahrenheit. We're expecting another four degrees Fahrenheit by the end of the century. So if this minimum, this uh, grand solar minimum, were to actually come our way, it would only mitigate maybe 15 percent of that, meaning we're not going to see global cooling. We're not going to see an ice age. We're going to continue to warm. It just may be not quite as warm, but it would only shave off a half a degree Fahrenheit of a six degree rise in temperatures Fahrenheit because of humans. But I do, uh, I do worry about even a half degree when it comes to the temperatures of the oceans. Would that affect, I mean, even a small percentage like that could still have some kind of an impact on, on, on coral reefs and, right. and, and the, the life that exists within the oceans. If if the temperatures were to come down a half a degree Fahrenheit, remember, they're coming down a half a degree because of a grand solar minimum, but going up six degrees because of humans mm. from the 1800s through the end of this century, a little right. beyond that. So, you know, it's not cooling the oceans near enough to help the coral. The coral, in all likelihood, Vlad, will be almost completely gone by 2050. And that's, we're, we're almost 100% sure about that. That is, uh, yeah. that is frightening. Yeah. Because the coral reefs in our oceans are a building block for the oceans, uh, for the food web of the oceans, and they support us too, obviously. So that actually brings me to my next question about the myth of carbon uh, dioxide. Mm -hmm. The carbon dioxide levels are so tiny that they, they can't are. possibly uh, affect a difference in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, what are some of the uh, misconceptions about that? So listen to this. This is extremely cool, interesting science. So yes, carbon dioxide levels are less than one tenth of a percent of our atmosphere, a teeny little portion. But because of that, Earth's average temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It keeps us comfortable. If we took all the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere tomorrow, do you know what the Earth's temperature would go down to? Within 50 years, it would drop more than 50 degrees Fahrenheit and the Earth would turn into an ice ball. It would probably go down from 60 degrees Fahrenheit to around 10 or less than 10 degrees Fahrenheit across the whole Earth. Now, not all of that is due to carbon dioxide. What happens is carbon dioxide gets taken out of the atmosphere. That reduces the heating blanket of the atmosphere and temperatures begin to go down. That takes all the water vapor out of the atmosphere. The water vapor is also a very strong greenhouse gas, stronger than carbon dioxide. You take the water vapor out because temperatures are dropping. Now you have nothing to shield the earth anymore. Temperatures drop from 60 degrees down to below 10 degrees Fahrenheit and you eradicate almost all life on earth. So the point that I'm making is that that little bit of carbon dioxide makes a huge difference between life and death on this earth. Can you clear up something uh, for a lot of people, because I often hear uh, from people who deny climate science, uh, they reference the temperature, they mm -hmm. reference the weather. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between weather and climate? So climate is just an average over the course of decades and centuries, and weather happens on a daily basis. I like to say this, the weather is your mood, the climate is your personality. Every once in a while, you probably yell and scream at people, right? 
You wouldn't say that. Not your me, Jeff. Well, I don't. I, I've, ne I've never heard it. I've never heard it. Everybody but in this newsroom is I'm like, what are you it? talking about? It's Vlad. But it's happened once or twice in your life, maybe, right? <laughs> yeah. That is your mood. To my that little is, sister. That is, okay. <laughs> well, that is your mood. That is the weather. Uh, but in general, you are a great guy, just like the guy you see. Get a, get a shot of him. Look at this smile on his face. Keep talking. All right. Keep talking. Exactly. <laughs> that is your personality. That is the climate. So the climate is that you're normally a great guy, but every once in a while you yell at your sister. Mm. Okay, that's the weather. So, yeah, it's important, I think, to continue to have these discussions because uh, the, the, the scientific consensus around climate change is solid. And yet you will have people that will frequently try to cite some kind of what they believe is scientific evidence that uh, we are not seeing any types of global warming. That is another myth. Yeah. The scientific consensus exactly. Thank you. is 97 to 99 percent of scientists, likely 99, but because I'm a scientist, I'll be conservative. 97 percent of climate scientists, publishing climate scientists, say that climate change is being caused by humans. But if you ask the American public, do you believe that the consensus is over 90 percent? Only one out of five people know that almost all climate scientists agree. So that is called the consensus gap. So even though almost every scientist, credible scientist in the world says, yes, absolutely, you can see all those. Those are all different studies, by the way. Mm. Some of them say 97, some say 100, some say 93. But when you do the math, it ends up being about 97 and 98 percent of scientists agree that climate change is happening. By the way, people always say, well, how much of climate change is due to humans? How much is due to natural? I hate to say it, but the contrarians that are watching right now, 100% of climate change over the past 150 years during the industrial era is due to humans, 100%. Good thing we're not living in the era of Galileo anymore. Right. The father of modern science. <laughs> That's exactly mm -hmm. right, because you might be in a bit of trouble. You would be. You'd be in jail probably. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, Jeff, so good to have you, man. Always love talking to, to you. Appreciate it. Of course.